Welcome back to all the crackers in the box. Okay, I'm gonna get you to focus. And I'm going to introduce you to Squirtle and his really cool friend, Pikachu. They are done, they're finished. So let's talk about them for a few minutes. So glad you're here today. These are my two latest finishes. We have Squirtle. These are all from, both from the same pattern maker. I will link her YouTube page from um, in my description. Speak English. And these were hers were originally made with plush, and I made mine with four weight loops, threads mostly. This is a little bit of Red Heart and some random black. I have no idea what kind that is because it was just from an oddball leftover ball that I've made up. We've got this little shell, which is super cute. The tail was fun to make, a little different. I felt like this was a little bit stretched, but now that he's starting to settle, it's not nearly as bad as I thought. It's a little squishy. I got a little chest plate put on. I wasn't going to, but I did. My daughter talked me into the eyebrows. Other than that, I think he's adorable and he also sits on his own. He's not going to sit here because of the pillow. Oh, maybe he will. Yay! But this is Squirrel. And he's done. Now on to Mr. Pikachu. Pikachu I found to be a lot more challenging. His ears turned out lovely. Super cute. A little bit of stuffing in them. The face is slightly crooked, I think. Or it's just that the eyes aren't exactly the same. But I kind of think that gives him a little more personality and cuteness. The cheeks are very sweet. When I originally put this hand on, it was like two rows back this way, so it was really lopsided. The legs went on fine. Now the tail. Let's talk about this tail. First, I put it on upside down. Completely the wrong way. I also did this stripe in black. Pikachu does not have a black stripe on his chair, on his tail. He has a brown one. And these two brown little lines on his back. So these would have to be added on. This had to be replaced. I wasn't going to take the whole thing apart, so I would have had to take all of this apart, undo it, undo the sewing I did, and I sewed it properly, flipped it inside out to give the, this a nice tail. This has got a lovely little tail. And he sits as well. So I'm okay with this. And this is a bit of a softer. Even though these are the same brand. This yarn in particular is a little bit softer. So that works out that it looks a little fuzzier. I'm okay with that. I'm not going to complain. I got the right color in the right spot. So we're just going to leave it at that. Take a look at these little cuties before I get them ready to go to the little boy that's getting them tomorrow. I hope he enjoys them. And they were definitely a challenge cute challenge but still a challenge these were very challenging especially Pikachu again okay so this is an interesting project this is my ball of slug yarn I'm probably not going to use this per se I'm definitely using these blues and less of the pink to make myself a hat I am going off of a Bago Day pattern, which I will link in my description. And I am um, already made this once. I've made a pink one. And I probably have posted the picture up here somewhere. I have one, the finished one. I don't want to go get it right now. It's really early in the morning. Overslept again. Pretty quick and easy little pattern. 
highly recommend it. It's much better than what I did. What I did was terrible. I thought that I had done a bucket hat and I looked at it later and in pictures and I was not very happy with the outcome. So I'm just gonna use this pattern to whip together a couple bucket hats being that it is hot this week. Very sunny. And my daughter's needed to be done because she has a field trip, a walking field trip at the end of the week. So she really needs to have a good hat that can handle getting wet and still keep her protected. So I used a thicker cotton. This is probably a cotton I would definitely use more for like kitchen cloths, but it's brand new. It's never been used for a kitchen cloth. So I thought this would be a great one to use for hats that I could wear that we could wear to like the water park or the beach and get them wet and walk around with them wet on and they will be just a little bit cooler than a regular hat. So that's my intention here. They shape up and they make up really quick. I had to undo a bunch earlier because I didn't realize for some reason, but I don't have enough blue to do the whole thing. So I'm gonna have to mix at least the two colors, possibly a white stripe or two. I'm just gonna bury that. As much as I can. See this row starting to round it out. I've already made one for my daughter and I tried it on my head. It fits me really well and fits her really well. So that's exactly what I was going for. And they're just clusters of three double crochets all the way around. But definitely go watch her um, tutorial. It's easy to understand. As usual, Bag of Day has very nice tutorials, and a lot of them. So yeah, watch it from beginning to end. All that good stuff. I definitely recommend this hat though. It's very cute, very lightweight. It's a great shape to it. And like I said, it is so easy to make. It's actually quite fun to just whip out a little hat in between other big projects and more complicated items that I've been working on. If I'd been paying closer attention, I would have definitely been pretty much done by the time I made this video. But, you know, stuff happens. And that was the end of that row. Oops. And we just repeat the next row exactly the same. So that's nice and easy. And then I believe it is just starting the brim. I'll have to look at the video really quick. So I may have to pause the video while I'm making here, which is okay. 
I do like the two different colors. I didn't think I'd like the pink and the purple in there, but I actually think they are quite complementary with the blues. So that's good because I really like the blues. The blues is what I really want this hat to be mostly of. And see those pretty blues. So I did take apart the granny squares I made originally with these ones. I kept the lighter ones. I'll probably just use them as dish rags. But the indigo and darker blues, I really want this one as a hat. I have my heart set on it and I'm going to have it. Because it's my favorite color scheme and I will enjoy it. I like wearing it, so that's always a bonus. Because I need a good hat this year. I mentioned before, I do have bucket hats for myself, but they are thick, double sided, vinyl y type material, and they are not very summer friendly. They're cute, but not what I want to wear when it's sweltery hot to like almost 40 degrees outside. And the idea of being able to get my hat wet, just throw it on my head while I'm walking around to keep my head somewhat cooler, I think is a great idea. again. So I think I only have to do two rows to shape it. So we're getting a nice round. Because before I got to this row the first time I was really starting to doubt it but I'm like no I gotta trust Bag of Day. She knows what she's doing. She makes hats. She loves hats. It's one of her favorite things. So. I'm sure she did not steer me the wrong way with this pattern. I am using a 5.0 millimeter crochet hook. gives the stitches a nice looser but not overly loose look and feel. Sorry, just gotta move my foot. Ah there we go. Sitting on my foot and now it's all numb. So if you hear me saying ow just because I'm getting pins and needles in my foot and it hurts. It hurts. Oh just wiggle those toes. Get that blood flow going again. It's been warming up around here lately. I keep hoping for more rain. I don't want to have a dry summer. Okay, it looks like I'm reaching the end of this row. Yeah, I'm almost there. I'm going to have to pause for a moment and just take a look at her video and see what she says is the next one. I'm pretty sure it's the start of the brim. But I also might try it on just to see if I need another row. Because I might. You never know. And slip stitch to end that row. I'll be right back. Okay. Just gonna keep on going the same way apparently. So we'll just keep on around. I think I am going to do one extra row of this. The next one is the brim um, pattern, but I think I'm gonna do one extra one and just have mine be a little bit taller. I feel like it's not fitting the way I'd like it to yet. Not for me, anyways. That's okay though. Maybe my stitches are tighter, maybe they're 
maybe I missed something somewhere along the line. I could have done that because I had backtracked quite a bit. Be able to get the pink in so it wasn't just like blue on the top and pink on the bottom. I didn't want to do that. I wanted it to be more of a mix. I'm getting close to having to bring in a pink ball. I love the way this is working up. I think this is going to be a fun hat. I'm just going to throw the pink in. Ooh, white to white. That works out really well. Barely noticeable the change in the ball. You can choose to cut these ends. I prefer to leave them in as much as possible. I'll cut them if I start noticing them, but I just, you know, don't want the knots to come undone and have nothing to work with in case they do. I have a chance of fixing it if I can just have a little length. And I just twist them around. It gives me a little bit of a chubbier stitch. But in the long run, a chubbier stitch is better than having it fall apart. Especially considering I'm probably going to end up washing this a few times in the washing machine. Just because I just know that's going to end up happening. Especially if it gets worn in the lake. We got a lot of Canadian geese and they, they're... Um, lovely fecal matter that they leave everywhere it can cause swimmer's itch so can the ducks and we have lots and lots of them in our lakes so it's not a good idea to wear stuff that's been in lake water if you don't have to plus it'll just keep the hat smelling nice anyway we are going to keep on going I want to thank you for joining me here at All the Crackers in the Box today, and I hope you have a great day, and I'll see you again very soon.